officials are having a press conference now on uh, considering or concerning that Hyde Park fire. Let's listen in. We have uh, 298 units in this building. Of those, only 267 were occupied. We got this call at about 10.06 this morning from a resident on the 16th floor who smelled smoke. So that's how we were first alerted. Companies arrived on the scene and, been, and then, then they aggressively attacked the fire. They grabbed the communication systems, notifying all the residents of the building of what was going on, which is really important in a high-rise fire. So we found that the fire started on the 15th floor. Uh, right now, we have one uh, resident who perished in the fire, eight transports that were stable, all civilian. We had one firefighter, yellow, transported for ortho injury. 33 civilian refusals at this time, and we use the second floor as treatment and triage to actually sort through all the residents and have them a secure place. So what we encountered here, because the fire went so far from the 15th all the way up to the 24th floor, was the fact that the wind was pushing. The fire went up vertically, and it lapped from, from floor to floor to floor all the way up to 24, where my firefighters gained control of it. They did an outstanding job because that fire did not go uh, horizontally, it just went up straight vertically, and they did everything they could to put that fire out, and they were here for a long time doing it. Um, I don't, what questions do you have? There are smoke detectors. Okay, yeah. No, I, ha I don't have any reports of sprinklers. The smoke detectors in the individual units are battery operated. The smoke detectors in the hallways are hardwired. Did they go off? I don't have that information right now. Talk to us about, you know, I know that residents were being asked to stay in right. their units. About how the, the, the building is constructed, why it was safer for them to do that, and, you know, how you're going to or just go unit to unit to check on everyone. Uh, Chief Furman is going to answer. Okay. I'm sorry. Talk to us about, you know, why is it safer to shelter in place? You know that the residents were being asked to stay inside their units. It was safer for them to do that sounds counterintuitive, but explain why it was this way. Yeah, so we usually ask uh, residents to stay in place. Uh, 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 High-rise building is a uh, fire resistance construction. Uh, it's built with uh, uh, fire separations built in. The doors are fire rated doors uh, to the apartment units. Uh, the stairways are enclosed, the hallways. Uh, it's set up so that uh, you can remain in your unit and still be safe. If you do encounter uh, 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 smoke or heat or fire, you call 911, and that's why we try to get units up to you as soon as possible. If we do evacuate a floor that's announced over the PA system, and we do it that way. But a lot of times we don't want people to self-evacuate because they could put themselves in harm's way. And so just talk to us about how you handle that situation in a building this large. And, and I imagine you have dozens of people who've been just checking on residents. Yeah, so we had to check a lot of floors, uh, and like the commissioner said, we only had uh, eight transports, which was good. Uh, <clears throat> The wind can work with us or against us. It's always a, a factor when you battle a high-rise fire. In this situation, uh, the, the wind was such that it wasn't pushing the heat and smoke into the building, but it was coming from the other side, which helped uh, uh, fan the flames and create the fire uh, plume that you saw from the outside, which uh, created a lapping effect, which it was so intense that it reached the windows above the floor and then it, 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 it ignited the fire on, on the floor above. So we were just trying to stay ahead of it. Unfortunately, we lost uh, elevators and uh, so that meant we had to bring uh, all the equipment and manpower up 15 flights of flights of floors, uh, flights of uh, stairs, stairs. stairs and, uh, and, and just trying to get ahead of it. But it was a fast moving fire vertically like the, the commissioner said and it was tough just staying ahead of it. Yeah, final search is still underway at this point. We've, we've, we've conducted final searches on uh, uh, several floors, I think four floors right now, but we're still going to go through the entire building and check to make sure that, uh, that we don't leave anybody that needs some uh, And that some would help. be that would be in addition to the phone calls that were made through 911 that were conveyed to us that we individually check those as well. But the full building will be checked. Did the person, the person who died leave? Do we have We're that? Not on that? Yeah, right now we can't, right. We yeah, don't I, have that. Well, if I still work on that, we don't know for sure. Our, our Office of Fire Investigation is up there right now, and they're beginning their investigation. Did you have trouble getting water to the top floors? Well, it, yes and no. 
uh, we, we got water on, uh, we, we use the standpipes. We use the internal uh, protection systems that are uh, already built into the building. So we connect to standpipes. And so what we did was get water on the fire on the initial floor, but as it lapped, we have to uh, uh, conduct a, a, a secondary front on the next floor. Well, the problem is, is, is you can only get so much water out of that standpipe. So once we got, then we have to kind of piggyback and, and try to move and stay ahead of it. But like I say, this was a very uh, fast moving fire and we, we had trouble just staying ahead of it because of the lapping effect. So just so you know, we had over 300 personnel on the scene and over 85 pieces of equipment fire and EMS for this actual fire. Talk to us about like those evacuations that you didn't have to carry out. How did you prioritize them? So that's why it's important for high-rise buildings like this to have a, a list of people in special needs. So we got the list of people who, uh, who are maybe uh, physically challenged. We got to those uh, uh, units first. Uh, we prioritized those guys. Uh, and then we made announcements as we saw, uh, 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 we evaluated smoke conditions on each floor. And as we, it, conditions worsened, we evacuated those floors and then uh, uh, moved those. Those were the priorities. Are you concerned about the structural integrity of the building right now? Well, we got the building department here. I'm sure they're going to assess any kind of damage, any spalding, any damage to the concrete uh, or, the, or the structure. Do you guys Chief, have identify any yourself for the camera. I'm oh, sorry, you identify, identify yourself. Oh, I'm sorry. Mark, M A R C, Furman, F E R M A N, Deputy Fire Commissioner. Uh, Do you have any information on building inspections? Are those up to date? We don't. Know. We don't have any of that right now. Our investigation too, so we do look into that. Building department's on the scene working. Right. 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 Well, well, the good thing is that uh, it's uh, OEMC automatically dispatches. They they are uh, a, a great partner when it comes to helping uh, relocate and uh, and find housing. Uh, uh, we get Salvation Army involved, so uh, hopefully we can find uh, uh, shelter for anybody that's displaced. But our OEMC reps are on the scene right now, and they're working with Salvation Army uh, and housing right now. What do you do in a fire like this to make sure it doesn't go horizontal, that you can keep it vertical? Well, like I say, a lot depends on the wind condition. Uh, I'll, I'll, our main thing is trying to get water on the fire as fast as possible. Water on the fire is the key. Uh, and it's always a challenge just once we lost the elevators, just moving manpower and equipment uh, and, and trying to stay ahead of it. But this was a very fast moving fire. Very not, this was a little unusual. We don't get them spreading this fast, yeah. So can we expect to see any more evacuations happening here? Uh, right now we're still in our final search mode. So we'll, as we'll tend to each resident that needs to, uh, that is displaced as needed plus the building department the building department determines that as well okay yeah. now you did say that one of your firefighters was injured can you tell us what happened just an ortho injury minor. right minor just minor can, can we, so looking left to are there, is that one unit per floor or are there multiple units per floor i i can't answer that right I, yeah i i don't yeah i'm not sure yeah yeah we haven't gone up yet OFI is going to, is going to con conduct an investigation, definitely. The source, the origin, origin. But we got to wait until we finish all our other operations before they can do that. Okay, thank you, people. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Annette, A-N-N-E-T-T-E. Last name, Nance 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 Nance